The Spin-Off Podcast Network. This is Kiwi is back for a brand new season with more inspiring kōrero from special guests including rugby player, father and role model TJ Peronara. My family bring me joy. Rugby brings me joy too, but it's not the same joy as my family brings me. And global dancer and choreographer Kirsten Dodgen. For some reason people think I'm very intimidating. Listen to the new season of This Is Kiwi, brought to you by the Spin-Off Podcast Network in collaboration with Kiwi Bank. Available now wherever you get your podcasts. Kia ora, this is Toby Manhire, here to urge you to tune in to Gone by Lunchtime, a podcast with me, Annabelle Lee Mather and Ben Thomas, tackling the world of New Zealand politics, from policy to polling, from scandal to psychodrama. Listen to Gone by Lunchtime, brought to you by the Spin-Off Podcast Network, wherever good pods are sold. Start your day with The Bulletin, a newsletter from The Spin-Off, summarising New Zealand's biggest breaking stories and highlighting the best reporting from around the country. Sign up for free today at thespinoff.co.nz slash newsletters. The Real Pod is brought to you by our good friends at Nando's. They've got restaurants across Aotearoa, and if you order through the Nando's app, you can collect Perry Perks points to redeem for delicious rewards. Hit nando's.co.nz to learn more and start earning. Welcome to The Real Pod. This is your real life in New Zealand podcast. All the unimportant bits, but the unimportant bits are what is getting us through in these crazy Omicron times. My name's Jane Yee. Welcome along to Alex Casey, Duncan Grieve. Hello. 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 We're all far <laughs> apart again. We are. Yes. We're all far apart. Takes me back to the bad times. Mm. <laughs> We're kind of in the bad times again. Um, yeah. <laughs> but let's not linger on that. We've also got T.I. here who is in studio with Duncan. The best place to be. That's right. Very socially distanced. <laughs> and uh, we are even more distanced, Alex and I, uh, in our abodes. Um, I'm just, I'm the B team for T.I. here, so we can't be in the same space ever. So if he goes down, I'm behind the desk. That's why I'm isolating. I'm not isolating, I'm just hanging out at home. Alex, you're... Just being safe, aren't you? I'm being safe. I have been to redacted place <laughs> where redacted <laughs> has happened. <laughs> I was going to say, like, you might be being safe, like, right now, but that's not been what you've been doing. Like, you've been very unsafe lately. But I love it. What do you mean? Well, you've just been going. You've been going gallivanting around the nation. Yeah, I have. I have. I've been uphill. I've been uphill down Dale. And, and Omicron also been gallivanting around the nation. So that's that's what we mean when we say she's been unsafe. If you had to choose um, one out of Uphill and Down Dale, which one, which one was the best? Uphill. Uphill every time. Oh, my time. God. Really? Down Dale. I mean, all I'm not walking up anything. Down Dale. I'm imagining Down Dale is damp and smells weird. See, I imagine that Dale is like just like a bluff farmer guy who, you know, has a, has a jug of spades. <laughs> <laughs> and um, just, we're just hanging out. Hey, just a reminder that we have our Real Recap Maths AU podcast, which is going to be dropping tomorrow after the show turns up on 3 now. So make sure that you join us for that. Also tell your flatties. Uh, and as for the Real Pod in general, please review us on the Apple uh, and, and rate us <laughs> with five stars and so on. And you can actually rate us on Spotify now too. So that's a new development. Go do that. Thank you very much for joining us. You can find us on Facebook, facebook.com forward slash Corner groups forward slash Corner. I'll get it right one day. And also on Instagram at the Spinoff Podcast Network. We have much to get through and not a lot of time to do it. So start the timer. Here's the real news. Uh, I know I said we weren't going to talk about COVID, but <laughs> <laughs> when the Queen gets COVID, that is real news. What a run. First the jubbly, now the COVID. <laughs> <laughs> Not only that, but in the mix somewhere, she has announced a new line of condiments that she's producing. She's doing sauces through her Sandringham House um, website. What? We must review. Yeah. No, she's already, I didn't realise this, but she's already got gin. Is she uh, going, and chutneys going, and confectionery. 
Because she always used to just endorse things. Like she was like the original influencer. She put her like stamp on, on you know, a whole variety of things. Even like Boots the chemist was her official chemist. But I didn't realize she'd gone direct to consumer and was starting to make her own stuff. When you say put her stamp on things, Duncan, well, her, you mean literally? <laughs> I, you know, well, her royal seal. Her royal seal. You know, <laughs> from like. For, Wouldn't that be great? If she had a pond in the backyard and had some royal seals. <laughs> she can eat. Seals live in ponds, She eh? can eat a goose, eh? What? Isn't that something? Or you know like nobody else. only she. Yeah, no one else can eat a goose. Or something like that. Is she like the only sanctioned person in the United Kingdom who's allowed to eat a goose? I think it's something like that. I'm not here to train. What about, what that a swan? What about dinner guests? Oh, Is it, it might a swan, be swan or a goose? I find them similar. It seems like a swan. I find yes, them really similar. I think they might be the same. <laughs> the Again, goose is corner, evil. But what is the difference? <laughs> I haven't looked up delivery details, but uh, you can go check it out for yourself, shop.sandringamistake.co.uk. Actually, I've, I've, I've been a bit premature because I don't think the sources are available yet, but there are other treats there that you can buy, including the Bumper Bear by Mary Thought, uh, which is a little teddy bear, which is nice. Um she has COVID. I'm curious to know if she bought it, caught it on the, the bottling hall floor while she was uh, bottling up her sources, you know, in production. Busy place, a, a factory. And There'll be another collector's item, bottled Queen's COVID with the jubbly <laughs> plate. Sauce close to the Queen. Am I right? Whoa! Whoa. That's so good. <laughs> okay, she's experiencing mild cold-like symptoms and intends to continue with light duties. Does that mean she's... Gonna carry on in some light public duties. Pickling? Because you want to catch the Queen's COVID, right? If you're gonna get it, you want it from the, the Queen. The Royal Strain, yeah. Mm. She's 95. I don't think that bodes great for someone yeah, with but COVID. But the fact like, that she's like, I'm gonna keep working through it says she's confident. But what yeah. her working through it is just going, congratulations to the curling team. <laughs> and you can do that <laughs> in any state, can't you? <laughs> Speaking of being in any old state, two South Islanders are selling their tiny house by getting nude. A friend's <laughs> Joseph couple got creative in advertising their tiny A-frame cottage for sale by appearing naked in the promotional photos. Don't worry, couple's bits and pieces are covered by strategically placed objects in the photos and the listing has had over 37,000 views on Trade Me. The nude people are not included in the sale, but the house does come fully furnished with great views and a self-composting toilet. Uh, did you look at the pics? I did. Yes. I was, thought there was going to be more nudes. I did too. Um, there's one nude, uh, but you can see pubes. Like, <laughs> a lot of pubes. <laughs> <laughs> did you zoom in? But you can. I mean, it's no, you don't need to. Oh, okay. It's quite a Hold thing. <laughs> I didn't know It can, be, can the be seen pubes. from the moon. <laughs> pubes from the moon. <laughs> oh, yeah. Are you looking now, Alex? Yeah, I'm looking. Interesting. Um, I... I just was quite taken by the property. Like I thought it was, I, I reckon they might actually elevate the sale price by just having more people go, that's a lot of land, a lot of land and a lot of cot for um, <laughs> for, for the price, you know? I mean, so it's a long, long way from anywhere is the only downside. The photos, I feel, uh, they're very amateur. They're all like lopsided. They haven't tied, they haven't tidied up the place. No. Nah. One little smidge. Yeah, but what <laughs> is it, like 250 take, like, grand or something? Come on. 315. I mean, She's you know, a bargain. at least take your What's grey water? Is that bad? That's, that's like... That's... Like your washing machine water and stuff, isn't it? Mm. Yeah, and you and you've washed yourself water, but not your bad water out your. your <laughs> well, just with the nude and the nude is I don't know what to think. The composting toilet is just a lot. <laughs> I do wonder if perhaps uh, the, the the sale price indicates that they can't afford it, or the fact that they're nude. They can't afford clothes, so that is just <laughs> another indication of how unaffordable housing has become. I guess to the point that you have to cover your bits with a watering can, you know? <laughs> I have seen, It's going to be Auckland in no time. I have seen a lot of uh, nudity on Trade Me in the past few weeks, like just in auction. Not nudity, but definitely knickers and definitely nipples. Whoa. Like people selling, for example, a mesh top, but just like nothing underneath. Or someone selling a top and taking a photo of themselves wearing it, but just wearing undies. I don't know what's going on there. So if you're finding yourself on Instagram getting censored by putting up nitpicks, head to Trade Me. That's your place. Yeah. 
Mandy McLean is engaged. Congratulations. Big congrats to Breakfast producer and CTI legend Mandy McLean, who announced on Instagram he's engaged to his partner of five years, Ryan Teese. That's the story. It's just a nice thing, isn't it? Very happy. I wonder how many people they'll be allowed to have at their wedding when the time comes. Who knows what the future holds? Is there going to be another strain? What will it bring? I'm terrified. A Finnish skier has suffered from a frozen penis during an Olympic race. Remy Lindholm needed a heat pack after his Olympic cross-country skiing race when a certain part of his anatomy froze in the cold conditions. Quote, You can guess which body part was a little bit frozen when I finished. It was the one of the worst competitions I've been in, he told Finnish media. Lindholm came 28th, which is, I think, respectable, given he had a frozen bit. And uh, this is the second time his penis has frozen while competing. <laughs> Risky business. How... <sighs> What's the line between cold and frozen? When do you know? Is he like... When you can't feel it anymore, I guess. Like you touch it independently of anything and, and it like feels nothing. So just a bit numb. Or, or what did he mean I, literally like the blood has iced? Because then wouldn't solid. it be like, wouldn't it fall off? I don't know. Like, wouldn't it? Do you very, think very he got... Dangerous. Did he just get a boner and he's trying to pretend that his penis got frozen? Is that what you're suggesting, Dunk? <laughs> That's absolutely not what I'm suggesting. I don't <laughs> feel like conditions were very sort of boner friendly from, from what I've read. It seemed like it was incredibly cold. Um, <laughs> can you not can you not get one of those in the real cold? I don't know. I don't have one. I'm just asking questions. Anyone? <laughs> well, Anyone? I can't no I can't I, 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 haven't, I haven't spent a lot of time in the real real cold. <laughs> um Down Dale. It does seem like some <laughs> Down Dale, yeah. It's just probably uphill, to be honest with you. But you go down, Dale. Oh yeah, if you, if you if you your your wang's called Dale. Oh my god! And you're commanding. And here we are. <laughs> Anything to add from someone who has one of those, Duncan? Uh, oh, it just sounds real unpleasant, and I think it would only need to happen to, to me once, especially if I was a sort of quite bad. Okay, like 28th is not, you're not really, you're just, you're sort of there to make up the numbers and I wouldn't risk a second frozen dick um, <laughs> by, by going, going, going back when, when I clearly had my, my potential for glory was so minimal, you know what I mean? Oh my God. That's what I've got to add. Okay. Thanks, Dunk. Appreciate it. Um, if you're missing The Bachelor at NZ, which we all are, uh, you can get a rundown of Lexi's favourite gowns. Now, I watched the little reel. She's made a reel on the social media that um, is her kind of talking over a whole bunch of her beautiful dresses that she wore during the show. She got to keep that one that was in the final. Do you remember the one that was like um, high-waisted knickers with uh, – I mean, I'm sure it wasn't knickers. It was some sort of fashion thing with uh, a, a sheer big black sheer thing. I recall. Do you remember I recall. That? It's still in her closet. It's a tool, tool. Oh no, we've had this conversation. Yeah, it's a lot, a lot of tool. Tool. I'll show you tool. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't watch this reel. What was I wrote? Because I am not. I, I couldn't access the Instagram. Um, so uh, I took a guess at what my favourite gowns were, and I wondered if they married uh, up. I love the peach princess dress that she wore in the first episode. That went, yeah, that was she in there. She enjoyed that. I hated, the. there was a bright neon pink one that she was wearing in Queenstown. She wore that and she said it reminded her of something a friend, one of her friends would wear or something. Uh, yeah, she didn't really comment on that too much as, as to whether or not she liked it, but she it did, it did feature. And there was a red one that was like very structured that didn't seem to fit her properly. Can't remember if that was in there. Mine's a sieve. Sounds like it would be, though. It's a big old Diet Coke you got there, Jane. It's actually a Coke, Coke Zero, not sponsored. I thought Coke Zero um, was discontinued. Nah. No way. I'm glad it hasn't been. There's just there's, there's room for both. You can have no sugar and Coke Zero. It's got actually and diet. very different taste. Or is it taste. Diet? No, Diet's been discontinued. No, no Diet's still there, diet. Yeah, it's all there. I'm it's sure the one of them Coke Light. Coke Light's gone. But also, you can get no sugar vanilla now in most places, which is a real thrill. You shouldn't be able to get any kind of vanilla Coke, yeah, in my vanilla opinion. Is it's disgusting. Are you joking? I am not joking. No, this is the end of the real pod. To me, very yummy drink, that. No, that's just Very fell. yummy drink. T.I. here, what do you think? I'm a big vanilla Coke fan. Wow. Thank you. Oh. 
Yeah. Divided wow. right down the middle. Vanilla Coke. I have nothing further to say. Anyway, it's not that big. It's a 600. I think it just it looked like you're drinking a liter, like because it was close to the camera. Anyway, this is nah. good for the listeners, nah. isn't it? <laughs> uh, I'll tell you what is good for the listeners and the viewers. Below Deck fans rejoice. There's a new Below Deck spin-off coming our way, and it stars legendary New Zealand Stu Aisha, and it is Below Deck Down Under. Not in New Zealand. Uh, but still close enough. It's going to be bringing us more obnoxiously wealthy guests into wild super yacht antics. The show will be based in Australia's Whitsunday Islands and stars the delightful New Zealander Aisha as Chief Stew. And the preview looks amazing. Um, it's going to be on Bravo later this year. I'm so excited. Aisha as Chief Stew is like Edmund Hillary climbing Mount Everest. <laughs> it is a triumph. Can you explain Aisha? Because I've watched quite a few seasons of this show, but have yet to encounter her, and I feel oh, she's amazing. I think she's she's in Below Deck Med uh, five, four or five, and she is second stew, I think. Um, and she is just the most like grotty Kiwi, but so funny. Like she just loves to talk about bums and farts and all sorts of stuff like that all the time. Ugh. Very real pod. But also um, is really good at her job. And Can we get her on? I reckon we could get her. I, I reckon I want to. I reckon we should try and get out on a on a yacht with her. You know? Oh, oh my god, that'd be amazing. I think we should try. We could be the sort of second stew and other stews. I would definitely. Be, I mean, I know there's no like ninth stew, but that would be me, <laughs> just vomiting and in bed the whole time. <laughs> Well, you could be the guest. <laughs> I want to be a third stew. I want to be the person who no one expects anything from. Yeah. Like, are oh, they just a third stew? Like, you you just do the laundry. Much. I would be stressed doing the guest yeah. laundry. Like, I'd rather have more responsibility in a way because I'd shrink the silks and whatnot. Look, I have only watched, as you know, the full season of Med 4. I've gone back to the beginning of Med and Danny pashing a guest is... Amazing. Oh, spoiler alert if you haven't watched it, but, it, you know, it's, like, insane to me. It's so good. It's just the best <laughs> show ever. What's also good about Aisha is, like, a lot of – there's a lot of problematic shit happens on these shows, and she she calls out a lot of her crewmates and stuff in a way that you don't really see, I think, in the world of the show. And it sometimes gets kind of real. She, like, talks about some stuff she's experienced herself when someone makes, like, a rape joke, and it's like – She's just an amazing character, and I highly recommend watching Below Deck season something. <laughs> wow. That was going really well, eh? Yeah, you really, you really, then you real potted it, which is appropriate given where we are. It feels like we need a break. We're going to have one, and then we're going to come back with some real life stories from everyone but me because nothing is going on in my life. Back soon. When you choose to invest, your money has power. Avoiding companies that finance weapons production or ignore climate change is important. But impact investing goes beyond just avoiding harmful behaviours. It's an opportunity to invest in companies that are actually improving the world. Invest in a better future with the Harbour Sustainable Impact Fund. Grow your wealth and make a positive impact on the world. This is not personalised advice, a disclaimer, and the product disclosure statement for Harbour Investment Funds issued by Harbour Asset Management is available at harbourasset.co.nz. Hi, I'm Brian Crump, host of Sci-Fi Sci-Fact, a new RNZ podcast in which we take some of science fiction's strangest ideas and explore if they could really happen. With the help of scientists from New Zealand's McDiamond Institute, we'll look at all your favourite science fiction characters, from Wolverine to Rumpelstiltskin, Doctor Who to Luke Skywalker. You can find Sci-Fi Sci-Fact on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, basically anywhere you get your podcasts from. Welcome back. Uh, I got nothing. I got nothing in real life. I am still helping my parents clear out the house. <laughs> we'll still be doing this in about four or five years' time, the rate we're going. And that is my story. But do you have? Did you find any treasures this time, Jane? I. What have I brought home? I've brought home some little containers, uh, and that's it. I'm being very reserved because shit's getting real. Like 
the agents coming to look at the house is still shit everywhere. It's just, it's a nightmare. It's a living nightmare and I'm traumatized. So I'm just going to, let's just move on to you guys. I don't know um, what I can say about my last week because I have been somewhere secret. (laughs) I did have to do a spit COVID test for the first time. Have you guys done one of those? No. No. It is so much spit. It is like you have to stand there for ages and you have to, the guy was like, no air bubbles. So you can't forcefully spit out. You have to drool into a spoon Ooh. and then spoon the drool <laughs> into a vial. And it took like 20 minutes and it was just hideous. And then I real potted it because I actually, I did too much air bubbles and then when I put the lid on, all the spills oh, came spit All your precious sides. spit. I was just like, this is a crazy time we're living in. You know, it was me and like, you know, 20 other people. Just everyone's getting spit tests. Everyone's spitting. Oh, these are clue. No, these were not people that I knew. These were just any like people trying to get places. Oh, right. So okay. civilians. Civilians. Mm. Hey, so could you get some of that overflow spit, pop it aside and use it? in the same way that people use other people's urine to cheat drug tests. Could you cheat your COVID test with some... I suppose you could. Some burner spit. I suppose you could. If you're willing to carry someone else's spit around, put it in your own mouth, dribble that out. Or your own spit. Like, if <laughs> I were, say, to, after this record, store some spit... Uh, Like, say I wanted to travel somewhere, I was concerned that I might be infected at the time and I'm very selfish and just want to go anyway. This is very hypothetical, obviously. If I stored some spit, say, in this very cup right here, um, could I just whip that out at a COVID test? I think the guy would see you, or girl, Uh. um, (laughs) and you'd have to... It would have to be contained within your cheeks on arrival. What What if they were blindfolded? The clerk? Yeah. Then I could get away with it, probably, couldn't I? Well, then I think you'd probably but it'd be a police matter, I think, if you were starting to blindfold <laughs> COVID, COVID authorities. Okay, just checking. Just checking. <laughs> it's just worth asking, I thought, for the people at home who might be wondering for themselves. I'm not sure that it was worth asking, actually. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure any of that was worth saying, actually, on my part. Sorry about all that spit talk. Um I don't really have anything else that I can talk about. I embarrassed myself slightly at the Takeout Kids launch. Fantastic new series available to watch on the spinoff. Um, someone walked in who had flowers for the director, Julie Zhu, of the of the no. program, and they were going to the toilet, so I offered to hold the flowers. And then a lot of people thought the flowers were for me. <laughs> so I tried to do something good, and I pants it again. <laughs> <laughs> I had nothing to do with that series, <laughs> but I was very happy to take all the credit. <laughs> that is unusual for you, Alex. Duncan, what's happening in your world? I, I'm not sure that anything's happening in my world. I'm I'm racking my brain. The one thing I did think, which is not really in my world, but this is um this is the last real pub we'll be recording when you know not in the studio, but the spinoff moves out of its office this week. So we've got a lot in common with you and your parents. So, yeah, Thursday's the the end of this era. Similar hectic energy, I have to say, on Slack yeah. with just photos of cables and all sorts of shit being posted up. Like, who's, whose laptop from 2004 Don is Rose. this? It's you know? definitely Don Rose. It's it was Don Rose, Don Rose. okay. <laughs> Throw some good stuff on there. <laughs> he has been looking for that for years. I'm surprised. I mean, you're probably, it's probably lucky you're isolating... Um, Alex, otherwise you'd have a, a discman and a laptop and a lot of cables. Well, no, I have already texted Matt and said, can you send me a photo of all the junk? And then I said, can you take those candles for me? <laughs> 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 so there's some more stuff. I, yeah, I'm, I've got my eye on some. I think that discman could be, we could be kicking ourselves in 10 years' time that no one took that discman home. What do you think? Well, it's not only that. It's a discman with T-line shorthand disc in it. So What is T-line is like, uh, it's the shorthand they teach you at journalism school, which I actually um, faked it by doing longhand <laughs> at shorthand speed. Um, and they were quite cross with me, but they couldn't deny that I could write <laughs> fast enough to pass the test longhand. Hang on. Are you really, are you that fast at writing? Well, I, I made myself that fast because I really just, I just straight up did not learn it and I had no other option. 
But I don't know about this about you. And then, you know, I think it was last week we were talking about what would our special skill be if we were to appear on that new 60 Seconds show. And maybe that's it for you. You can just write down some stuff really fast. I probably, yeah, it would be writing right, longhand, shorthand. I think it's more, my, actually my speed at typing with two fingers. I'm faster than most people typing with all their fingers. I think that's probably true of you as well, Alex. Mm. Would, 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 be, would be a better skill in, t- in that sort of same genre. Um, Callum, who who does our content management for the Spinoff Podcast Network, I've noticed is a very good one-handed typer. Ooh. Oh, yeah, that's weird. That is so. actually how I used to type. Well, one one hand isn't like all his fingers or one finger. No, one hand, one hand, like holding the laptop underneath, oh. and then one hand o, o top, kind of like playing the piano, like a tiny little piano, like I'd a tiny little like piano. Anyway, anyway, <laughs> that is our. Podcast, <laughs> is it? Really? Johnny, do you have anything to add? I feel like we should ask you how your week's been. I've got nothing to add for real life, but I'm thinking maybe the vanilla Coke thing is a generational divide. <gasps> oh my god! Oh, just way of saying. My god! Hey, hey, you, we are Jane old. and Duncan. I know that you thought we were all just like <laughs> pals hanging out, but you've got to remember <laughs> you're old enough to be our parents. <laughs> <laughs> you guys can read into it however you would like to. I, I think that's, that's my only pretty, takeaway. Pretty much only one way to read into it. In my day, you could only get one kind of Coke. That's right. It was called and Coke. It, it was just it was called Coca Cola, and we didn't complain. That's right. Yeah. You're the ones that are complaining. <laughs> we didn't need anything else on our on our six mile walk to school in the snow with bare feet. <laughs> <laughs> I tell you what, though, but vanilla Coke launched in our in in our era in our youth. Yeah. So I don't think that argument stands. We were there with all the fanfare. That's right. We were queued up and, outside uh, Smith and Coe's for a thimbleful yeah, of uh, vanilla it wasn't, Coke. It wasn't. It wasn't. It we would just j- jump on board like the nostalgia retro train, you know? <laughs> <laughs> okay, that actually is our podcast this week. <laughs> I'm craving, uh, a, jo- I'm craving a VC right now. <laughs> <laughs> Do join us for our Maths AU recap tomorrow, and uh, we'll, and we'll we'll see you with more hijinks of this nature next week. Hooroo! Just quickly, if you're enjoying this podcast and value what we do at the Spinoff, please consider joining the Spinoff members. All our mahi is made possible by our members, and we wouldn't be here today without their support. Tōtoko mai and head to thespinoff.co.nz slash members to sign up. Kia ora, I'm Duncan Grieve, founder of The Spinoff. You can help us keep all of The Spinoff's award-winning journalism free for everybody by becoming a member today at thespinoff.co.nz slash donate. Kia ora e te iwi, te Ahe Butler here, podcast manager at The Spinoff. If you enjoy listening to our podcasts, consider supporting our mahi by signing up to become a Spinoff member at thespinoff.co.nz slash donate. The Spinoff Podcast Network.